episode of Unveil. On this platform, I interview women of color on discovering the beauty that lives and lies within them. We also take a closer look through their eyes on their interpretation of what they define as beautiful. My guest today is Ms. Tracy Johnson, who is a legendary celebrity hairstylist and a cutting expert in the beauty industry. She has amassed an immense client base, servicing women from Nia Long, the late Cicely Tyson, to Jada Pinkett Smith, Lynn Winfield, and the list goes on. She also recently opened her new salon, Legacy, located on Melrose Avenue in Los Angeles, California. However, through all of her accomplishments, Ms. Tracy has not forgotten who to service first, and that's God. Without further ado, Ms. Tracy Johnson, yay! Yay, hi. <laughs> Thank having you so much. So Absolutely. Excited. I am so excited. I'm so excited. And I think that your story is just like to even to even grasp is just amazing within being like Los Angeles. And it should be heard over and over and over again. Um, but first we're gonna start off with you know the question that I ask all my guests which is growing up, who or what were your beauty inspirations and how has that evolved to who you are, the women are today? Um, well, I guess I would say growing up, my beauty inspirations would be, of course, my mom um, and my grandmother, um, beautiful women. Mm -hmm. um, you know, someone was talking to me earlier and they were saying, you know, you know, how do you not let, you know, your looks get in the way or, you know, um, be, be not, not be superficial. Mm -hmm. I said, because my mother and my grandmother, they always taught me, you know, beauty is as beauty does. You can be, you know, as beautiful as you think you are, but if you don't have a beautiful heart, a beautiful mind, a beautiful soul, you know, it really doesn't matter you know, mm -hmm. so thank God they taught me that. And um, so they're my beauty inspiration in, as far as inward beauty, mm -hmm. um, as far as my inspiration for, you know, actually the hair industry. Yeah. I was, my mentor was uh, the late Ron Newton, who was the son of the Black Panther leader, Huey P. Newton. Um, he was to me the most amazing hairstylist that, I, that I've ever known in my life. And uh, I don't, honestly, I don't think I've ever seen anyone more talented than he. he. He actually committed suicide about a month or so after I moved to Los Angeles. But, and that, you know, of course that was devastating for me, but he was my mentor and my best friend. Mm. And uh, he taught me a lot. Right, so. right. And speaking of, you know, moving from, cause you, you were raised in Oakland, correct? Yes. Yes, so moving from Oakland to Los Angeles. Um, so uh, you recently had a book that you had um, published a couple years ago. Called... Well, it's not actually published yet. Oh, it's, it's not, not, not published yet. It's not published yet. Okay, but so soon to come. It, yeah, you saw some excerpts from my book. Ex yeah. Excerpts, excerpts from yeah. my book. Um, yeah. Is the title still gonna be Help My Unbelief? Is it um, yeah, I'm, it's a working title right now. So okay. Okay. I'm not sure if it's going to continue being that or not, but that's the working title. Yes. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. But um, as you mentioned, so you know that you, within a month of living in Los Angeles, you know, these series of events have happened. So one of them that you had mentioned was that, you know, your mentor had committed suicide, um, but you were also um, homeless living yeah. out of your car. How do you, you know, and I, and I want to have this, you know, I want to have this discussion with you because I find that, you know, as like creatives, you know, we come from these various different cities and for some reason or another, major cities like Los Angeles, New York, and even Atlanta, they are places that we want to gravitate to, to kind of further pursue our careers and right. further move forward. Right. Right. And when you experience these kind of situations, how do you like in those moments, like converse with God mm -hmm. and in those moments and not question him on the path that you're moving towards? Well, I will say that miraculously, I never questioned him, even when I was sleeping in my car. I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt. I knew young. I knew in high school. My friends used to tease me in high school. I went to an all girls college prep high school. And my friends used to tease me because I wanted to go to cosmetology school. And they were mm -hmm. like, your mother spent all this money for you to go to 
of this college prep high school and you want to go to cosmetology school. And but I knew what I wanted to do. I knew that I just didn't want to be a hairstylist. I wanted to be the hairstylist. I, mm-hmm. I knew that, you know, I've been around enough hairstylists to know that, you know, that they can make way more money than doctors and lawyers and stuff. So I knew that. Mm-hmm. And so, but I also knew that I was a creative and that the things that I wanted to do excited me. And I knew that I was going to move to Los Angeles and do exactly what I said I was going to do. I mm-hmm. knew that in my heart and my soul, no matter what wow. um, obstacles were in my way, I knew that it was going to happen. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have to be homeless. I chose to be homeless because I didn't want to tell my family that I was in LA staying in my car. Cause I had a feeling that they would say, well, you need to get up and come back home. You don't need to be out there, you know? So mm-hmm. I chose because I knew where I was going and where I was headed. Did your family support I just, you? Absolutely, they supported me. Okay. Um, of course, they didn't want me to be homeless. My mom didn't find out that I was homeless until I wrote, I was writing it in my book. She oh. didn't. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. So I, you know, I, I spent a lot of time homeless, mm-hmm. but God was with me every step of the way. Even with, I, I talk about this a lot. There's a, um, this guy at that, that I guess he was one of the owners of, um, Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles, who used to feed me every day for free. Um, he wasn't trying to, you know, date me or anything like that. It was just by the grace of God, you know, he decided to be kind to me like that. So there are a lot of, a lot of miraculous things happened during that season of my homelessness. Mm-hmm. And I knew that God was with me. Mm-hmm. And when he was ready for me to stop, you know, um, cause I started going back and forth to, to not be homeless. I stepped, I started traveling back to Oakland to work so that I could afford an apartment yeah. in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. I started doing that. And then when God told me to stop, I listened to him. And then from there on, I never had to look back, but wow. wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, from, so from attending like the Institute of Cosmetology in Oakland, right. Yeah. And to moving to Los Angeles in 1990, when was the moment that you realized that creating shortcuts was like a skill you're going to master? Because like, I feel like prior, like I grew up in the nineties. So seeing women like Nia Long and, you know, there's even this, like this Haitian um, singer that I've seen and she had like this kind of like buzz cut that I'm like, wow, like I can really see her face. Like, it's just so beautiful. Like, how did you navigate to saying, you know what, this is the direction that I want to go in. Um, and to just, you know, master that skill. Well, you know, um, haircutting was always something that I, that intrigued me. Mm -hmm. To me, if you can master short hair, you can do anything because short hair is way more difficult than doing anything else. Oh my God. Most difficult. That's why it's very hard to find people who actually can do it. So I wanted to do something that was exclusive. I wanted to do something that everybody could not do. I wanted to do something that I was good at because hair is an art and I'm an artist and it came easy for me. Mm-hmm. You know, it came naturally for me. First of all, I come from a whole line of hair, of beauty professionals. Um, I'm not sure if you got that in my, re- in your research mm-hmm. that, um, you know, my great grandmother, my great, great grandmother, she actually worked with Madam CJ Walker. Wow. So I know wow. From- long line of beauty professionals and it's been it's in my blood and I mean that on both sides of my family wow and so yeah my grandmother she had um several sisters like it like I think six of them were hairstylists um my one of her sisters she was the first african-american to female to own a barbershop in the state of Texas wow on my that's on my mother's side on my daddy's side my my aunt was the first African-American to open up a salon in Beverly Hills. Oh, um, so, and she was a celebrity hairstylist as well in the mm-hmm. 70s. So I come from, you know, a rich um, heritage of, oh of my gosh. So, um, you know, it was in my blood and my mother wasn't surprised. You know, my family wasn't surprised when I wanted to, um, you know, to, 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 to uh, get into this business. But my mom would always tell me, okay, now if you're going to do this, because my mom and my immediate family, they were, you know, college grads, you know, um, 
grad school grads and all that stuff mm-hmm. my brother every you know so they were like okay so if you're gonna do this you got to be the best you got to do it you, I mean don't just get in here just because you want to you know have manage your own schedule and take off when you want to take off and all that kind of stuff because you will be self-employed but with that I am a very um I'm very uh, a determined, I'm very determined, but I'm also a very responsible person and I'm very business minded as well, which, which is a plus in this industry, because when you're dealing with a cash based business, you know, a lot of hairstylists that I know, they never have good credit. Um, they don't own anything because mm-hmm. they, as fast as the money comes in their hands, the money's going right back out, you know, but I was never like that. You know, I, I, I was the, you know, the one who, um, you know, I, I, I was very responsible. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. So, you know, when you speaking of that, that actually, I had, there's another question that I had that I, I did not send, but one of the questions that I want to talk about is that, you know, in this industry, like a lot of, um, I find that like when it comes to creative, specifically when it comes into hairstyling, barbering and these kind of spaces, even acting or what singing, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. that it has to almost be very similar to like how s- sport athletes are, right? So they come to a point in their life where they're like, they have to create an exit plan and an exit strategy to exiting out of this industry. Right. And so, you know, what advice would you give to like hairstylists that are, you know, working as well as upcoming stylists that want to have that celebrity clientele um, to not be blinded by the industry as their only source of income? Well, you know, that was, I'm so glad that I had the insight to understand uh, that at an early age, as far as not putting all of my eggs into one basket, one basket of trying to just do celebrities, you know. Mm-hmm. Yes, I did a lot of celebrities. Yes, I still do celebrities, but my bread and butter are the people that come to me every week. Those are the people that have priority over everyone. Mm -hmm. So, so many people want to be a celebrity hairstylist, but they don't understand that first of all, celebrities are not loyal. Mm -hmm. They may come to you. They may stay with you. Then again, they may not. They might go to the next best thing that's chucking. You know, Mm -hmm. that's, that's what they do. So don't put your stock in them. Mm-hmm. don't think that that's gonna last forever it's mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. um I've just been blessed that after 36 years in this business I'm still doing it and I still do and I have a choice whether or not I want to do this or that or, you know people are still calling upon me to do stuff um that's because I stay relevant and I stay um up on top of things and I know what's happening I stay young you know <laughs> yes yes we got we got to talk about that yeah. And I'm, but, and I'm professional. So sometimes people want professionalism. They want experience. Sometimes they don't want the one who, um, who got their, uh, their, uh, education on Instagram or or on, um, YouTube, you know what I mean? So, um, thing about these young people, you know, they don't, they might, they might be able to do some hair, but do they have the experience? Just that, Tracy, you have no idea. Like we are in sync because my, like the next, my other question to you is like, when it comes to cosmetology schooling with right. these institutions that are providing like class time, book learning and hands-on training, like right. in today's world where individuals are teaching themselves, is school still necessary? Um, yeah, also pretty- are these schools and also, <laughs> yeah. And also are these schools like, um, preparing these stylists to cater to black customers as well. Well, let me just say this about cosmetology school. It's absolutely necessary because there are things that you learn um, in cosmetology school. Like you, we learn chemistry, you know, we learn anatomy. We learn, you know, cause you have to know chemical breakdown and stuff like that in order to do color and, and understand the way chemicals work and, mm-hmm. you know, to not damage someone or kill someone. You know, you know, like this girl with this, uh, what's that, um, gorilla glue. Oh, the gorilla, yeah, the hair glue. Oh, I'm saying, if you don't understand certain things, you can't look at those ingredients and understand what's in it and what would harm someone. You have to learn about, you know, allergic reactions and 
all kinds of things that you cannot learn just by on, being on YouTube mm -hmm. and learning how to curl. Just because you learn how to curl your hair does not mean that you're a master stylist. Just because you can, you know, fake a haircut because that's what most of them are doing is faking haircuts mm -hmm. uh, does not mean that, you know, that the haircut is going to last because it's not no real hair. It's not a real precise precision haircut, mm -hmm. you know? So, so I, I am, I am one advocate for um, educating customers because mm -hmm. um, you need to know the difference between a professional and someone who just does hair. Yeah. There's a difference. There's a difference between experience and someone who just does hair. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I'm noticing these days that more and more people are walking around with no edges and, mm -hmm. you know, because they've gone to folks who just do weaves, but they don't, but they're not stylists. They don't have an education behind them. Yeah. So yeah. One, of the, one of the biggest things that I learned from when I started like wearing a hair extensions, cause uh, you, you know, my hair, I have a thick grain of hair. Oh, yes. And yes. so like, one of the things that my hairstylist, because I kept going back to back, this is when I, you know, just getting out of high school and I'm like, I'm wanting sew-ins, I'm getting sew-ins. And it clicked in my head immediately when she was like, Nicole, you need to let your hair breathe. Because if you don't, your hair is going to fall off. So you need to let your hair breathe. And I, it stuck with me. Even to this day, I don't play around when it comes to my hair. Well, let me tell you something. Hair mm -hmm. is a living, breathing organism. <laughs> And anything that is a living, breathing organism, if they are, if it's not exposed to oxygen, it will die. Mm. You, hair mm. will die. If you cover your hair up constantly with these weaves and wigs and all that stuff constantly, and you never allow your hair to draw, to, to, to breathe, yeah. your hair will die. Mm. You will end up with no hair. And, and that will end up being you'll end up having to wear the weaves, the weaves and the wigs. You'll have to do that because you won't have any choice. Is now, there any way to, to, to kind of bring it back in those situations or? Sometimes you might damage it to the place where it's not. I mean, I've seen people with like holes and, you know, spots and holes and we, weave damage and wig damage. Sometimes it can be permanent. Yeah. And that's from you to, that's from dealing with people who are not educated, who don't understand um, hair mm -hmm. and the health of hair. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't understand it just because you know how to curl somebody's hair on YouTube. Yeah. You don't, get, you don't understand that. You, you right. don't. Right, right. So those are the things that, you know, trouble me in this industry because our industry has been um very microwave microwave kind of transactional yeah. kind of you know space where they it want it quick has, they want it now it, it has definitely been and our and our our industry is not it doesn't have the respect that it deserves anymore mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know and so um i i'm you know it's it's my mission and some of my colleagues mission to remind people that this is a profession. It's not only a profession, but it's a multi-billion dollar business in industry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And as long as the professionals are allowing unprofessionals to lead this industry, then we're going to lose credibility in this industry. Mm. Our industry will lose credibility. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, well, what's, what's, what's definitely incredible um within yourself is that tracy i first of all Tr tracy can we talk about how old you are yeah we, i don't i don't have a problem talking about yeah. my age um 52 three 53. 53 does not look like it at all i okay. i feel like listen i feel like as with hairstylists like you guys are also like slash like therapists because I feel like the women that come in and like sit with you and congregate with you, like one of my like best memories and like all the memories that I love is like being in a hair salon because it's like all these women are together and like we all are like our not like not saying like at our best, but we're all wanting to get to the point of like, you know, looking beautiful that we congregate and we're laughing and we're, you know, having these conversations and everything. How do you keep yourself daily like your 
be just regiment, just like day to day, like keeping yourself going. Like, how do you, how, what does Tracy do to ensure like her mental stability is great, her, you know, her food, whatever, like whatever you're doing on a daily basis, just to keep yourself like just youthful. I, I live who I am. I live that. I don't, I don't do things. I'm, I just, I, I'm just a person that will just be. Mm. So I, um, I do, I think about constantly, you know, what I put into my body. Mm -hmm. Um, I've always been one who cared about, you know, taking care of myself. You know, I always felt like, you know, from day one, I'm in the beauty industry. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. That's who I am. So because of that, I have to, my life has to reflect that. I need to move in that, you know, in everything that I do, everything that I say, the person that I am, you know, because, you know, beauty is not just outside, it's also inside. So, you know, first and foremost, you know, I get up, I spend time with the Lord, you know, I get on my face before God because I'm his daughter first. Yes. And then, um, you know, and I, and I, that in itself, you know, his light shining from me um, makes me beautiful. You yes. know what I mean? So other than that, you know, that's the main thing that I do. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, and then I guess the preservation from that, um, you know, my mom is the same way. My mom is, on, she'll be 80 years old in a couple of years. Or my mom. Oh my gosh. Like I amazing. Her, I've seen her pictures on your social media page. So beautiful. I mean, amazing. But it's also because, and I, and I talk to my mom about this all the time. I don't care what age you turn, mm-hmm. you are as old as you think you are. Yes. And so I told my mom, I said, never say, oh, I'm almost 80. So let me start acting like I'm almost 80. Yeah. No, we're not going to act like we're almost 80. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We're going to still dress nice, still dress fly, still put exactly. on our, hair, still get our haircut, still look good, get our nails done, our feet done. We're still going to do all of that right. until the day I die, until the right. day I can't do it anymore. Right, right. That's who I am. That's what I do. So mm-hmm. I'm not going to change that because, and I'm not going to start when I turn 70, start wearing 70 year old shoes. Okay. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I'm not gonna start wearing 70 year old clothes. I'm not doing that. Right, exactly. So I, I don't mean I'm gonna be like wearing midriffs at 70, but right. I'm gonna be respectful and I'm not gonna have my breast all out and sitting up and I'm not gonna do all of that. I'm gonna be respectful because I don't do that at 50, you know? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But what I'm saying is this you take pride in your temple, you yeah. take pride in what God has given you, you take care of it, you take care of your health. Mm-hmm. That's your temple. You only get one body, mm-hmm. you know, and I haven't always been healthy um, with my temple because I wasn't really healthy emotionally. Mm-hmm. So main thing is getting yourself healthy emotionally. And when you can get yourself healthy emotionally, you, the, everything else will follow that, right. you know, get into therapy. If there's something that you need to fix and you know that you have some trauma for, from your life, from your past or whatever, deal with it. Mm-hmm. You know, so that you can exude the beauty that God intended for you to exude. Oh my gosh. You understand what I'm saying? Gems, 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 gems. Oh my gosh. What do you love about being a black woman? You know, I love what I love about being a black woman, and I, I love our resilience. Yes. Um, I love our rich history. Mm-hmm. You know, I love our skin. I oh. love our melon. I love that we look young forever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I do. Yes. I love that. I love that. I'm sorry. I am not sorry that I'm a black woman at okay. all. Okay. <laughs> I love that. Mm-hmm. Um, I love our strength, you know, mm-hmm. even though our strength was something that we had to, we didn't have a choice mm-hmm. to develop this strength you know, and this resilience, we had to develop these things because of our circumstances. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad, you know, all things are not good, but they all work together for good. Yeah, that's what God says, you know. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that I have a strong mother. I'm grateful that, you know, I have a strong mother, but she didn't teach me to, um, 
to look down on men or hate men or anything like that. She taught me how to to build up men and in our you know our brothers and stuff. And that's so important too that we learn how to build up brothers and speak life into brothers. Yeah, and speak life into each other as women. And yeah. I have a village of women around me that are strong but are loving, and we love each other. We don't have a lot of cattiness or jealousy or anything going on. And I love that. I love that. Right. Okay. And what's a, um, what's a favorite feature of yourself and why? A favorite feature of myself, I will say my ability to see myself, Mm. you know, um, you know, I, I know that there's so many people oblivious to who they are, you know, and I'm one of those people that I know me, Mm -hmm. I know me, I'm very introspective. I'm very self-aware of who I am and my growth and in in the places that I need to grow. Yes. Um, I spend a lot of time with me. And I think that so many people who are not aware are people who fill their lives up with things outside of themselves to try to make, you know, pacify the time or, you know, maybe, um, you know, dull the pain of their trauma or whatever. So they, they go out and they do stuff to, to keep them busy and they keep them occupied and keep them distracted. You know, I'm a person that I will sit with myself. Mm-hmm. I will spend time with myself. I will pray and ask God to reveal myself to me so that I'll know the areas in which I need to grow and I need to flourish, you know? And I think that's a big um, plus in me. And that's why I could, you know, move like I move through life because I understand who I am and where I'm going and you know and I know how to bounce back if if I fail or I know how to get up get back up and keep moving um because I know who I am Mm -hmm. you know and I'm so grateful for that because it hasn't always been that way yes yes you know Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what's um and then what's of like a beauty I guess takeaway secret that you can share with us a beauty takeaway secret. I kind of just said, you know, basically it's really, honestly, you know, get, do something on the inside, you know, so that that beauty can exude on the outside. And to me, that's the, that's the key to real beauty. You know, it's, I I ain't talking about being pretty. I'm talking about beauty. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I really feel, I feel that it's so important for us to really spend time getting to know who we really are and learning how to love ourselves and um, and being the best version of ourselves as possible. Mm-hmm. Now, as far as practical beauty, we're Spanx. <laughs> <laughs> Spanx on, no, don't look. Don't, ha- don't have the shakes and don't show all your, your, your your imperfections and dimples and all that stuff. Don't do that. You know, yeah. don't really need to see all of that. You see that, you know, you and your spouse, that's enough. Everybody, yeah. the world. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Okay. Um, that, that's my, that's my beauty advice for today. <laughs> right, right. Um, so l- thank you so much for this like interview, Miss Tracy, where can we find, like, what are all your handles? If you can provide to uh, share with us, I know you opened recently legacy, um back on melrose yeah back on melrose you were you were on melrose like what like when when were you back Uh, it was eclipse Eclipse salon Salon. eclipse salon that i had it that on on melrose for 15 years and now i'm back on melrose legacy salon i'm on ig legacy l-e-g um e what is it (laughs) l-e-g-a-c-c-i by tracy (laughs) t-r-a-c-c-i and that's my my handle for that and then also you can follow me on at tracy jw um on instagram as well or you can follow me on at tracy johnson warren on facebook great t-r-a-c-c-i is my spelling so yeah okay thank you so much and i'll have all of that in the description box below thank you so much tracy this was amazing i'm so You're excited thank, thank, you. thank you for having me i really appreciate you considering me for this i feel no. honored Oh my gosh, absolutely. Are you kidding me? Every time you put your hands in my hair, I'm like, oh, I, got, I get a little piece of Tracy. <laughs> and people stop, they know. I told you that people will stop you if you live in Los Angeles and if 
you get your hair cut by Tracy. I've had people stop me and say, who, who did your hair? And I'm just like, Tracy, they're like, I knew it. I'm like, I knew it. Because Tracy has that specific cut, which is- signature. They call it signature, yes. They know the signature. And this is what we call, as far as like going to cosmetology school, having the education, having the practice that you will create and define your own name for yourself without even you speaking. Exactly. Your own signature. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. It happens a lot. So yeah, that's a blessing. You know, that is a blessing. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Tracy. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me.